I'm bored. Do you want to make a medieval weapon with you I stole from a graveyard? You read my mind! This is my partner's local church, where I spent a recent weekend dipping my toes into a life of crime by stealing some yew trees from the graveyard there. You shouldn't really rob graveyards, but some people like to bend the rules. Literally. To be fair, I saw that they needed coppicing, and uh, I thought a project coming on, especially as I knew I was visiting my cousin Robin the weekend after, and we just love to make stuff. My name's Robin and I'm Daisy's cousin. Today we're going to be making an English longbow. Like a lot of things, we stole it from the Welsh. So it should be called the Welsh longbow, but here we are. Now, the longbow that Robin and I will be making today is somewhat at the mercy of the yew branches that I have provided, which goes to say a little bit skinnier and a little bit shorter than your average medieval longbow. Our one's going to be like one and a quarter Robins in length. That is, of course, the correct measuring unit. But it's really the history of this thing that made me want to build one in the first place. So let's get into that first and let me tell you, you guys are about to have your minds blown. Yew trees are renowned for being associated with death and rebirth, and it's no accident that you often find yew trees in graveyards. In true keeping with their memento mori situation, yew berries have poisonous stones, and so many think that yew trees were planted as a sort of shield around the, the precious church sites to keep livestock away, who could presumably detect these uh, danger seeds and not eat them, and therefore keep well away. Because let's be honest, the last thing you want during the Lord's Prayer is a big load of mooing. <laughs> However, it's actually been proved that these yew trees predate the Christian structure of a church. In fact, they were actually used as religious structures themselves by druids who used them in their rituals. Their interlocking root structures beneath the ground gives yew trees the ability to grow new trees from their original roots in a glade above ground. Aside from their coincidental relationship to death, uh, yew trees are actually the perfect wood, the perfect timber for longbows. So I have chosen this very deliberately. It's supple, it's strong, it bends but doesn't snap, which is obviously kind of ideal for a bow. And to top it all off, makes a really good guitar as well. Not that that's relevant, but to me it is. But anyway, now you know a bit about the wood, let's get into the woodwork, because Robin has some learning to do. I've never really done any woodwork before, but I'm really excited to learn. First up, let's get some tools out. If you go there, it's eating up. So we just want to get all the bark off. Absolutely. Wait, so is it this way? Yep, you got it. Good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, we might need to figure out a slightly more refined technique, but honestly, I think it's easy to forget actually how hard woodworking is. So having moments like this really grounds me and reminds me of how much like that I was at the start. I decided to take over a little and get things moving a little bit faster because I for one wanted to start putting a bowstring on this stave. We also kept in our thoughts those medieval bowyers who probably would have to whip up like a few of these in one day and like much thicker and longer staves as well. And as we thought about how much more we probably would have had to do in terms of like oiling, sanding, carving, those intricacies, the less we were keen to be particularly precious about every one of those stages, especially because my hands for one were pretty tired at this point already. And uh, this statement that Robin's about to make, optimistic at best. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna use this sandpaper to make this bow more smooth. And it is 120 grip, so hopefully it'll feel really nice on your hands. You see, yew wood is like a disgusting gift from Satan. It makes everyone in the immediate vicinity sneeze like a... Cat? But anyway, I pretended to sand it while Robin went and harvested more yew from the back of my car to make arrows with. Yew actually is a really soft timber anyway, so I am very happy to say he did not notice that I haven't sanded a damn thing. <laughs> We're gonna do the same thing with this and strip down the bark. So I'm literally just getting rid of all the little bits right now. Now one of the key points of conversation during our whittling session was Robin expressing to me, like all kids nowadays, 
that he too wanted to be a YouTuber. Subsequently, I had to patiently explain the economics of being able to like run around the country hither and yon making medieval weaponry. And like all good woodworking bosses, I uh, offered him the opportunity to do the work for me for free. To his credit, he's an absolute natural. Get across this. Now we're gonna talk about today's sponsor, My Heritage. As we said at the start of the video, Robin and I are cousins. Robin and I are fortunate that a lot of our family history is quite well known to us. But with over 19 billion records, My Heritage has helped us discover lots more. For example, I found out that my great-grandfather was a fight pilot, which explains a lot. It was also really fun for us to use the reanimation software on portraits of our grandparents and recolour them as well. Check out how absolutely wild this is. It took us some getting used to, but it's just unbelievable to have this kind of technology at our fingertips. I also figured out the instant discovery button, which led me to some new people like this guy here, who even had a picture. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go remind Robin that thanks to our great grandmother, we have a genetic predisposition to woodwork. Since we gotta start thinking about careers from the age of 12 nowadays. Family is obviously really important to us and being able to look at a tangible family tree is really exciting. Sign up to my heritage now and receive a 14 day free trial. And if you wanna continue with the discoveries then you'll get 50% off from there. There's a link in my bio where you can check that all out. Thanks again My Heritage, for sponsoring this video. Now we had to learn a new skill here, exciting, because the string does need to be in a particular knot for this. Actually Robin did get it a lot faster than me to be fair, but when you put a camera at somebody who's not experienced with having a camera aimed at them, it doesn't go so well. So here's me doing the knot. Thank you YouTube for teaching me how to do this. It's called a Bowie is Knot. Really quick and simple to learn and super effective for this. All we're doing is gonna notch it into the stave at the top and the bottom and that's what we're doing here. Yeah! 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 Wow. Cool. Now, although I'm sure we're creating a deadly weapon here, let's just go back to talking about what makes our bow different from the medieval longbows that we were talking about earlier. Essentially, it's just uh, thickness, length, and let's be honest, Quality. But I'm really glad that it is smaller because it took nine years to train somebody up to be strong enough to be an archer in a British war. On the skeletons of these archers that they found years later, they actually found unusual bone growths on their hand just because of the sheer force that they were putting their body under. But they did invest in training their soldiers because honestly, these longbows were revolutionary and partly because they could shoot such long distances with such accuracy. The record was actually over 300 feet. And like the power of these, man, like I read this account from this historian whose name was probably like James the Bearded. But anyway, one of the olden timey historians said that he once watched an arrow from a longbow go into this bloke that he was watching, who was atop a horse, into the bloke's leg, through the bloke's saddle, into his horse, and the horse died. Like, what? And like, because it was so hard to train one of these blokes to shoot one of these arrows, the king decided that everyone who was able-bodied in the land, be you you know, peasant or nobleman, they would have to learn to do archery. It was mandatory every Sunday after church. And that wasn't ideal to King Richard when the peasants planned their revolt. Yeah, because everyone knew how to like shoot like a boss. So nice one, mate. <laughs> Speaking of fighting like a boss, let's go try this thing out. After the string went on the bow, we headed out to the moors behind Robin's home to try out the power of our new weapon. Mega shout out to my partner's dad for letting us borrow his drone. Cheers, Richard. But of course, it was inevitable that we needed a huge camera range to capture this magnanimously powerful killing machine. All right, maybe it won't be killing any horses anytime soon, so let's just call it a vegan longbow. But if you do find yourself around a 12 year old and a graveyard, hopefully not for the wrong reasons, but if you do, Wonderful project, would highly recommend. And I reckon we could have got away with just using an ax for the entire thing. Would have taken like three times longer and looked a lot worse, but honestly, where there's a will, there's a way. Also, if you pick your timber a bit better and just create a really straight arrow, yeah, it is gonna fly further and it is gonna be more fun. Anyway, I'm gonna leave the bow with Robin because I think he's got some practice to do, but I'm hoping that in a few months time, I'm gonna come visit again. I'm gonna see him sitting, spit roasting a pheasant that he shot and planning a revolt or something. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Did you enjoy this video? Yes. Great. If you want to see Robin again, drop us a comment. No 12 year olds were harmed in the making of this video. See you next time. Bye. Great. Oh, that was so good.